Welcome to question number three in the Principles and Practice of Surveying question and answer review. The call of our question says, after graduating from university, your boss, a notorious fence line surveyor, asks you for help. He has a client property where the fence is near the boundary of the property, and he wants to know if he is doing things right. What should you advise him about when fences actually mark property boundaries? The situation is this. You've got a lot inside of a subdivision, and you find a fence line somewhere along the true boundary of the property. You're not quite sure exactly how well the fence meets with the true boundary as described on the original survey plat. But you've got the feeling that why would someone build a fence near the boundary but not on their actual property boundary with the neighbor? We've got four possible correct answer choices, and let's go through all four of those choices. Number one, fences along simultaneously created adjoiners are presumed to be true and correct boundary lines. Number two, according to the federal rule 803, the ancient documents rule allows evidence of old fences to serve as boundary evidence. Choice three, fences cannot serve as boundary markers because they are not accounted for in the priority of calls doctrine. And for fences that are referenced in the original survey may serve as artificial monuments. And your choices here all sound pretty good. Like taking your study materials with you on the go? NLC test prep courses are available anytime on any device. Order a bundle today and get access to the most up-to-date, all-inclusive study materials available for the PS exam. Visit us on our website for more information and to sign up today. So let's look at this. We've got a subdivision. And in the subdivision, there is one lot I'm surveying. The document that I want to go for every time is going to be the original plat that created the subdivision. And the question here is, what does the original plat show? Does the original plat show bearings and distance? Does the original plat show the fence? If the original plat does not show the fence, how well does the fence line match with our actual lines run on the ground? But I'm going to warn you, you have several different forms of evidence. You've got your bearings and distance, number one, and your fence line, which is a artificial monument, number two. We know that artificial monuments control over bearing and distance using the priority of calls. But those original monuments must be referenced explicitly on the original plat. Going back to the call of the question, was the fence line mentioned on the plat? I don't think so. The worst nightmare of a surveyor is to find a property boundary where the title ownership, as depicted on the plat, does not match the occupation. What if a neighbor is occupying three feet more than what he actually got on his original subdivision plat. That's a real problem. But your job is not to give away land that's being occupied. Your job is to number one, show the title, T-I-T-L-E, ownership boundaries. Number two, show what is actually being occupied by the property owners today and three, compare those two and document any differences. You're not a judge, you're not an attorney, you're a surveyor, and your job is to document, document, document. My last and only question to answer this hypothetical is this. Is the fence line part of the original survey record? 
is the fence line mentioned in the plat that created the subdivision? If that is true, then the fence line controls. If the fence line is not mentioned on the plat, then the bearings and distance control. So let's see if we can find an answer choice that is harmonious with that basic principle. The best choice we have here is answer choice D. And D says, fences that are referenced in the original survey may serve as artificial monuments. Fence lines that are referenced in the survey, original survey, may serve as artificial monuments. And if they don't, then it's tough luck. Are you ready to pass the FS, PS, or RPLS exams on the first try? There are no guarantees in this world, but I can tell you that if you prepare, if you study, you can pass this exam. Nettleman Land Consultants offers online courses with slides, videos, and practice questions, full length practice exam ebooks to practice that exam, and also pre programmed HP 35 calculators to make all of those tough calculations like curves, areas, and triangles a breeze. And if you want to pass the exam, join me. We can do this together.